I am content creator Joey Garrity. I'm the founder of Superstar Women Entrepreneurs Media Network and Joey G113. I'm dedicated to empowering women entrepreneurs to create a beautiful, personal, and professional lifestyle by spotlighting superstar tools, tips, and resources that gain them ease and grace. Every episode, myself, along with a featured guest, share our Superstar Women Entrepreneurs journey on my globally recognized show, Superstar Women Entrepreneurs Spotlight with Joey. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I have such an incredible guest today. She has an amazing book, and you know how I love books. I love knowledge. And hers is su super interesting. We're going to be talking with her in a minute. It's called The Guide to Traveling Gluten-Free. Okay, I love gluten-free, so when I saw this book, I was like, Lynn, you have to come on my show. I'm going to bring her up from, the, uh, from the, the green room in just a minute, but you know how I love swag. I love to give away swag. I, just, I love myself a red carpet and swag, and I love this notebook. This You'll be able to uh, be entered to win in a drawing. I'll let you know at the end of the show. It's this great uh, notebook, and it's by West Emery. And it's really cool the way that they designed it interior-wise, where you can put your date and your topic headers, and then they give you the lines. It's also gorgeous, so you can put it on your desk. I love everything to be lovely and gorgeous. Um even my pen has to be sparkly and lovely. Uh, so uh, make sure you uh, stay tuned and I'll let you know more about that. You can learn more about my products and my services at joeyg113.com. I am content creator Joey Garrity. I'm also a brand strategist. I am a marketing and social media expert, live streamer, and podcaster. And so you can learn more about me there. I want to talk about today's topic, and I picked it because Lynn her shares were in direct alignment with this, how to believe in your business, no matter what with ghostwriter Lynn Aliquetti. And um, we're going to talk more about her um, stage name in just a minute, because that's not her real last name, but I'm going to bring her up from the green room. Okay, here she comes. Hi, Lynn, how are you? Hi, Joey. Thanks for having me on your show. This is great to be here. Oh my God, it was so great to meet you at PodFest 2023, and I saw your book, and I was like, this is super cool, I have to have you on the show, because I love anything gluten-free, we're going to get into that in just a minute here. I also picked this particular uh, topic header about going for your business no matter what because of your shares, right? But first, could you right, please yeah. share your stage name with everyone, and how you came up with that? Yeah, so my creator name is Aliquity, and I actually came up with that um, years ago when email first came out. And um, I, you know, it was a new technology, and I wasn't sure if it was safe or not. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to use my real name um, because I wasn't sure if that tech was safe because uh, it was brand new. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to create a name um, for my email, and it's going to be like I wanted it to sound feminine, I wanted it to sound exotic and fun, um, and I wanted it to kind of, you know. Um, be kind of a very sparkly name because I have a, like a very sparkly personality. And so I started out with ELI because it's my, uh, Elizabeth is my grandmother's first name and I was very close to my grandmother. And so I started out with ELI and I just kind of made the rest up and um, used it for my email handle. And then several years later, I was working with a life coach and he's like, if you don't use that in some fashion, he's like, I am going to lovingly slap you because that's the coolest name I've ever heard. So when I started my podcast almost six years ago, I decided to use Aliquity as my creator name. And so everyone in the podcasting space knows me as Aliquity, the gluten-free girl. I love that. I think that's so cool. I love stage names. I also love that you write between 2,000 and 8,000 words per day. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, that is such a superstar spotlight moment. I love that, like, um, discipline. That's super cool. Yeah, and some of it is, the, the reason I can write so fast is I have, like, a natural gift or talent for processing and ideation. And so because I can do that so fast and efficiently, I can write so many words, like, per mm -hmm. hour. So in my and my topic subjects that I'm really well versed in, such as like health, wellness, travel, um, healthy lifestyle, and some other, and science and some other different topics, I can write up to 1500 words an hour. And then um, when I'm writing outside of my topics of content where, um, that I'm an expert on, 
I, I usually write around 750 words per hour. And so I only know two other writers out of all my writer friends who can write that efficiently yeah. and quickly. And so I know that's a gift I have, which I'm really grateful for as a writer. I would say so. I would say so. I think that's very impressive. I love that. Right. I know my clients like it because I can get work turned around very quickly. <laughs> yeah, clearly. I love your share here, your superstar woman entrepreneur, step in your spotlight share. When I decided to go for what I wanted without the influence of others, I stepped into the world of writing for a living. I think that's so important because I know there's I know there's women entrepreneurs um, who are tuning in and listening right now, and they're on the fence. They're on the fence right now. And I love that you said, no, go for it anyways. Yeah. One of the things you need to know with writing is there's so many different niches for it. Like there's, so uh, my main niche is ghostwriting and not a lot of writers like to do ghostwriting, just like lo not a lot of people who do voiceovers do audiobooks. Like that's a, a niche within um, the voiceover community. And I have several voiceover friends that don't only don't know very many people who do that. And same with writers, like just because you're a writer doesn't mean you're a ghostwriter. So if you do want to get into writing, you need to figure out what niche you want to get into. Like, do you want to get into writing newsletters for people or blogs? Or, you know, do you want to get into writing books? I know uh, a lot of writers don't like to get into writing books because there's a lot of back and forth with the client. Yes. And I like that because I'm a people person. I love talking to people. So for me, ghostwriting really plays to all my skills, but it may not play to your skills. If you want to write, ghostwriting might not be the right writing niche for you, but you need to find your writing niche. Yeah, I think it's so important too. Is that basically you're like, this is my gift and talent, and this is what I'm really good at. So I'm going to focus on that. Um, I wrote my own book. However, I'm a huge fan of ghostwriters. I think, I, and I totally agree with you. The back and forth thing that was that that was that was a difficult part for me, right? Is the constant rewrite and the drafts and the editing and all that kind of stuff. So I say, sisters, I think everyone globally should ha be an author of one book every single person globally. And if you don't want you to write your own, hire Lynn. She'll write it for you. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I love your book cover design, by the way, Joey. That's so important in the, in the book writing. Oh, oh, in the book writing world is that the cover has to pop. And I love your cover because it says a lot about the inside and your content of your book. But yeah, you, you definitely need to figure out your niche. And if you, if you want to write a book, there's, um, and you do choose a ghostwriter. One most important thing I always recommend to everybody is make sure you get a ghostwriter that clicks with your personality because they are going to be your BFF for the next nine to 10 months <laughs> to a year. And if you don't get along with that person really well, it is going to be hell in a handbasket and a dumpster fire experience for you. And that's not what you want when you're writing your book. So find somebody who really matches your personality, your style, um, someone who's willing to work with you. There are some ghostwriters who are like, well, if you give me your book, I'm writing it in this style. Um, I always do my best to write in my client's voice and style um, as, as to, to the best of my ability, which is why one of the reasons the first time I meet with a client, I, we go over creative console and I learn a whole bunch about them because without that initial interview, it's really hard to figure out their brand, their platform, like who they are, how they bring their personal branding into their business branding and so on. I love that, Lynn. I, I like that you get to know them first because that's so important. I have a question for you as a business owner. What's happened for you that has surprised you? Oh, my gosh. I think probably the biggest thing, well, besides the pandemic, <laughs> um, is just um, just learning about how most of my business um, and most of my clients that are like my best clients and my best fit are people who actually really, really well align with my values and my personality. When I first got into, so this is my fourth business, but I've had businesses in other different um, business verticals. And this one was a lot different because writing is so much more personal. And that was really a big surprise for me on how, how much, um, how much, how much more value is played because there's always value placed in your relationships with your clients, but how much more value is placed because writing is so personal. Yeah. And so that's such a, a roll of the red carpet moment. Thank you for sharing that is that you really, get, you have to know who you're going to work with and who's going to be a good fit. Right. Yes. Yeah. Cause that, that really does surprise you. I was surprised of who was my fit. I was, mm -hmm. I thought going into it, it was going to be one type of ideal client and it's ended up being a completely different ideal client. Yeah. Right? It's always surprising because we're inside our box, right? And we have this vision or this picture in our head and it might not be wrong, like per se, that we have that vision, 
But the reality is, is that these are the avatars we're attracting to ourselves. And you really need to work with that. Like you can't constantly push what you think should be out there because your clients have needs and pain points that they need resolved. And unless you're resolving those little niche pain, pain points and um, problems that they're having, you're not going to get the right clients for your fit. So that's really important to remember a lot of those you know, components when you're picking clients. I love that. I love your superstar women spotlight tip here. Building relationships for your business is key to keeping your business healthy. It's so true. I saw, okay, so I saw Lynn's book, right? And I was like, what? I was like, right? And we met in January, 2023. And Lynn is on my show now in July, right? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't forget our relationship. I didn't. I was waiting for the right time for the right topic to come on, to come on board. And now, and I was just like, Ann Lynn, I'm sending your book to one of my other um, talent in my network. Oh, great. Uh, Thank you. Oh yeah. No, I told her all about your book. So, she's getting, so it's getting mailed today. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> because I want her to, I want her to take a spin because she is like totally into health, healthy, everything. Right. Um, so it is about building out network, uh, relationships, isn't it? That we built out that small little relationship there. And yet, we're, we're building a relationship now. I love that. I love this. Yeah. Stuff. And one of my friends, uh, Alex Trumbull, he has a podcast all about building relationships and networking and why they're so important. And it's not about, you know, networking and build, building relationships isn't about how you can take advantage of people because some people have that misnomer. It's really about developing those relationships that are going to help you build your network and also you know, in return, helping the other person build their network as well, because I have lots of connections, other people have lots of connections, and just really meeting up and fitting with the right people based on your personality, your values, your goals, like your, your complimentary businesses. I have a lot of people in my network that have complimentary services, and I often refer them out, or like I have a lot of writers in my circle, because I have a writer friend, a great writer friend, Leo, he does grant writing professionally, and I don't do that. So if somebody comes to me and says like, hey, I need a grant writer, I'm like, oh, I don't do that, but I have a a perfect person in my network that can do that. So not only does it help you professionally, but it also helps your clients because you can refer them to people who have or who are the right fit if you aren't for them. I love that. I totally agree too. Like I have a huge network. I'm always referring people. I'm just like, and I think, and that it makes us feel good. It's part of, I love gratitude marketing. Essentially. It's gratitude marketing, like spotlight other people, like show off other people, be be, be that person. It's such a better person to be and you will grow your network faster. Anyway, people support those that support them. Yes. I truly and, believe that's true. And the other component of that too is like people know me as a ghostwriter, right? So I am the person who helps take your podcast or your content or your idea and turn it into a book. And so when people think of me, that's the one thing they think about, which is what I, I don't want them to think about eight things. I want them to think about my niche and what I do. And so that's why I, that's another reason why it's really great to network because when I'm on the top of their mind for ghostwriting, they'll refer me. And then when, you know, I have a client who comes to me and I don't do their service, I have someone at the top of my mind to refer out as well. Well, now you're going to be on top of my mind. So I'm ghostwriter. <laughs> I'm going to be like, I know one. I'm like, right. oh, no. and she yeah. writes really fast. <laughs> I can definitely I'm get the sure. job done quickly. A biz tip with review your business systems that keep your day to day running often. Do that often. Uh, they streamline and organize your business, and that builds confidence. Use an organization tool I like is Trello. I think that's a great way of really building a thriving business out there, especially for people that are on the fence right now of like, should I should I do this or not? And like, get organized in the front end. It really helps you with your confidence. Right? Oh, be absolutely. Organized. Yeah, because one of the things that you may not be aware of if you are not organized is the amount of time you spend looking for things. Like you can oh. literally spend several days oh. a year looking for things if you're not organized. And that translates into like making less money and less profit because you could be out, you know, hunting for clients at that time. And, you know, Lynn, it's so true. It's so true. I was just talking to someone. I was featured guest yesterday. I was just talking about this, how recently I read a book that every time you get off track, it can cost you up to 30 minutes per task per day. I'm like, that's crazy. That adds that's up crazy. really fast. Yeah. It I, does. I have it just get organized, be organized, right? I, I can't say it enough. I tell people all the time I use Trello. Um, I also use like literally a notebook and a pen, like to keep myself always on task and organized. That 30 minutes can really add up. 
Yeah. One of the things, newer things I started doing was when I get an idea of something I need to do today, I have, I have a Mac. And so I have stickies, which are like electronic sticky notes on your screen. And I immediately go to that sticky and write it down. And then I can just reorganize them and prioritize them. So the next day when I come back and I get to work, I just open my sticky and be like, okay, what's my to-do list and just start checking everything off. I love that. I love that. And of course you're organized because you're a writer. Um, and very disciplined. Um, I want to ask you this question um, as someone that's gone for a dream, which bravo to you, sister. Um, what's been one of your challenges that you've had to overcome? Um, wow, probably a lot. <laughs> but personally, I think my biggest personal challenge is because I have multiple disabilities. And so there are some days where like I can't work half a day because of one of my disabilities. And so my biggest personal challenge is to just give myself enough grace to be like, okay, like today's good, not going to be a work day, even though I wanted it to be um, like several days ago, I had planned a work day, but I was not feeling well at all. And I just, I can't be creative when I don't feel well. Um, I think yeah. like most people. And so I had to give myself the grace to be like, okay, I'm not working today. And like what other day can I work? And so I have to really be flexible with my schedule because of my, my, um, my disabilities, um, and also get client work done on time. So that's been my personal biggest challenge. I love that share. Thank you so much. That's, that's such a premier screen share. It's true, right? Know thy business rhythms, make sure you build it in or your doors could close. Yes. And so we want everyone, everyone hear Lynn's advice. Okay. Build in your business rhythms, right? She knows that she has to set things up so when there, when it's a challenging day, she can still get her, her stuff done, right? So bravo to you, sister. Bravo. Thank you. Uh, it's so true though. It's so true. We have to, we have to have to have to know who um who we are. We do. Yeah. And I think for me that that was another one of my challenges is I so I'm I call myself a green horse. I talk fast, I walk fast, I move fast, my business is fast, right? And so what I realized about my ideal client early on is that I need other green horses, right? I can't work with someone who I, I call them yellow horses, which God bless them because there's a lot of coaches that can, right? That, you know, they, they need a lot of time, a lot of sit back in their saddle time. And, and again, blessings, know who you are, right? But I like people that make fast decisions, move fast, move quickly, right? And so I had to tweak my business early on to call in that ideal client. Right. So I was working with the right ideal client. I have a business tip here, everyone. And it's a bonus tip. There'll be days when the naysayers will try to penetrate your business confidence. Be sure to dig deep and lean on your inner game. Also use it as fuel to keep going no matter what. Yeah. Fuel, fuel to keep going no matter what sisters, sisters and brothers, right? Yeah, I totally agree with that. I talk that. about this in my second book, yeah. Yeah, so that's a really great um, piece of advice because you're always going to get, no matter what you do, you're always going to get somebody coming in and telling you you can't do it or you shouldn't do it or you're whatever. And maybe for them it's not right, but how do they know it's not right for you? Like they don't know that because they don't know your th thought process. They don't know what's going through your head. They don't know all of your life choices. You need to make like all of the details and all the variables that go into that. So yeah, I meaning if you are you and you are being authentically you and you're not trying to be someone else, then yeah, definitely go for your dreams and, and just, you know, and ignore everyone else who says no. I mean, think about the woman who wrote Harry Potter. Like she got, I think like 36 book refusals from publishers. And now she has a whole, you know, book series, a uh, movie series, now a, now a video game. Like, it, I mean, it's incredible. And, and people told her no. And if she had accepted that, she would have never created the dynasty that she has today. Lynn, I love that share. And also, too, because I started out my company as a brand or marker social media girl, which I love. I think it's sexy. It's cool. I love all that. I still do that. But when I was downloaded to um, do my second book, to reveal my second book, the real reason I worked in Hollywood, I was very reluctant because it's not about branding. It's about inner game. Mm -hmm. It's about an inner game component. And I had a lot of naysayers. And they're like, no, you're the branding marketing girl. And I was like, well, I was downloaded this and told several times in dreams and everything, I have to do this book, right? And so I had to push through a lot of the naysayer, a lot of the, I had to push th 
through that. And I'm so glad that I did. I'm so, so glad that I did. It's yeah. my journey. <laughs> right. And when you're going through it, it's really hard. But when you get them on the other end, you're, you, it is so satisfying to know that like you, you were the reason. Well, I mean, you always usually have help, right? Because it's always good to have like mentors, coaches, sponsors, but like you, you know, pushing through and being resilient is such a huge component of owning your own business. Like if you don't have resiliency, owning your own business is definitely not for you. <laughs> it, <laughs> truth. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And not everybody has resiliency to have their own business. And that's fine because we need, you know, people in all areas of the world. But, but the thing is, is that, yes, if you want to have your own business, you need to be resilient. You need to have a tough skin. Or if you don't you need to learn to have one, because not having a tough skin and not being resilient and jumping into your own business, it's going to be super anxiety pr prone for you. <laughs> I want, um, what's, what's a piece of advice that you would give anyone out there? Who's There's writing a book? Oh, uh, so anybody that's writing a book, uh, the piece of advice that I would give them is don't worry about making your, when you first start writing your book, don't worry about making your content perfect. That's going to come way later. Just start brain dumping and just start writing about whatever you're thinking. Like clearly pick a topic and pick an outline, but then just brain dump and write it out. A lot of my clients think like, oh, I need to write it and make it perfect as I'm going along. No. Think of writing as like painting, right? You never see a painter who like paints one corner perfectly and then goes to the next section and paints it perfectly. So as a writer, you shouldn't be, you know, painting one corner perfectly or writing one paragraph perfectly. Just brain dump it out and then you go back and organize it and then you go back and do it again. And that's the whole process of writing. So remember, it's a process and an art um, and it's not going to be perfect the first time. I totally agree a thousand and ten percent with you, Lynn. I so appreciate you coming on the show. Like, again, I'm such a huge fan of your book. Thank you. Um, I will also be putting in the comment section down there um, the guide to traveling gluten-free, right? It's like it make, you make it easy. And, it, and I feel so strongly when you travel, sometimes you get bummed out because you're worried. You're worried the whole time. Yeah. How are you going to eat? How are you going to stay on track? I mean, that's, that's always been – that's a big thing for me. Yeah, food right. anxiety is really big, especially among the yes. CI community and people with autoimmune who eat gluten free because it makes them sick if they don't eat gluten free. And like when for me, um, when I get glutened, um, I'm sick for two to three weeks. And I actually got really badly glutened on one trip this past November. Thank God there was a nurse who had anti nausea medicine. That's all I had to say because if she didn't, my whole entire trip would have been ruined. Like it was really bad. And it was like I did all the same things I normally do. I just got caught. I think it was oats. But yeah. Um, yeah, you can get a lot of food anxiety when you're traveling if you don't know how to travel correctly, especially if you have food allergies or you know celiac disease or you're eating a specialty diet for health reasons. Well, Lynn, thank you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love thank you. Thank you, Lee. So appreciate you, Lynn, coming on the show. Look at her backdrop. It's <laughs> this is That's real. It's not a backdrop. It's real. <laughs> yes. Welcome to the Pacific Northwest. Lots of trees and lots of tall trees. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. I'm going to drop you down in the green room. Go grab yourself a mocktail. Thank you again for coming on the show. I so appreciate you, sister. Thank you. So well, thank you for the opportunity you. to come. She's cool. Lynn is super cool. I'm telling you, this book is cool. And I'm when I grabbed this book, I read it that same night because, again, traveling is very difficult for me around the food consciousness. And she makes it really easy. And she also put me at ease. Like I wasn't alone in the, on this, on this journey around the travel component. Right. So make sure that you grab that book. Um, I want you to win. I want you to, um, win. And so, um, in the comment section, give us a thought about something that Lynn shared with us today. Also too, I want to talk about being your own superstar, high expander love capacity, my book, my second book, I am launching the love capacity prayer bottles which go along with it, which um, have been customized by a prayer maker, uh, the bottle itself. And so when you're reading the prayers of daily habits, you can hold it in your hand and um, it has all these beautiful ingredients inside. And it comes along with a card of how to use it, right? And how to use it. And so I'll also be adding that so you guys can grab your prayer bottle. Um, I, oh, I want you to know as a woman entrepreneur that it is literally your birthright, literally your birthright to show up big out there and to share your gifts and talents with the world. Join me for another episode every Wednesday at 9 at 8 a.m. Pacific coast time and 10 
a.m. Central Coast time. And until then, I love you, I love you, I love you, and I appreciate you, sisters. Bye, everyone.